Good morning. My name is Dr. Samira Amalal, and I am the Director General of CropLife Africa Middle East. I am only sorry that I am unable to join you in person today. Also, I would like to thank CropLife South Africa for the opportunity to address you today. Personally, and on behalf of CropLife Africa Middle East, who I represent, I welcome the opportunity to share our views and engage in what I am sure will be a dynamic day of discussions. CropLife Africa Middle East are committed to sustainable agriculture practices and to the responsible use of plant science technologies in the region. Our mission is to promote understanding of the vital innovation, improvements and benefits delivered by modern plant science products. We are convinced that these products and solutions developed and distributed by our members' companies are indispensable for farmers and society in the face of the increasing complex and challenging global environments. And there is no shortage of challenge. The challenges that our agriculture faces in Africa, including here in South Africa, range from climate change, food security, water scarcity, inflation of fuel prices, trading and export uncertainty and restriction and increasing impact of Europe regulation over how we practice agriculture in our countries and how we export our agricultural goods. Today, African farmers are on the front line when it comes to coping with and mitigating the effects of these multifaceted challenges. Whether it's struggling to cope with increasingly unpredictable weather patterns, floods or droughts, or the different pests or diseases increased by climate change. African farmers have the right to access all the innovation and technology, empowering them to face these challenges. Our, our industry also needs a supportive environment to innovate the potential solution, modern science-driven farming, offering in the fight against climate change and food insecurity. Moreover, our farmers also need beer both clear information, time, and resources necessary to manage the regulatory challenge that the Europe is implementing to its markets. The Europe also needs to better understand the impact both intended and unintended on its policy ha are having on African farmers. It is to these last two points that I now wish to turn my attention. In fact, the use of mirror clauses is hotly debated and divisive issue in the Euro politics. Mirror clauses describe when an imported product should be produced under the same sanitary, phytosanitary, and environmental standards as product produced within the Europe. Crop Life Africa Middle East calls for mirror clauses to be compatible with WTO rules and based on solid internationally recognized signs. Moreover, change to European minimum residue levels and import tolerances policies risk negatively impacting the African green transition. We share here a serious concerns for the potential revocation of import tolerance for any active ingredient not registered in the Europe. There is also concern for the risk that the future emeralds to be set with the new data point such environmental factors. Therefore, our call as Crop Life Africa Middle East is advocating that MRL and the import tolerances policies be science-based and communicate as early as possible. These two prime examples of Euro policies impacting Africa farmers underline the crucial need for the European Union policymakers to not only focus on their own farmers and consumers, but also to better understand the specific challenges and the needs of African farmers, both from an environmental and trade perspective. Africa farmers not only require adequate transition period, but also significant technical and financial assistance to adapt their farming practice to evolving Europe standards. Also, the development of an, an access to viable alternative products and solutions must be ensured in good time. Very important to note that removing pesticides without providing alternative will threaten food security and the resilience of farmers and consumers in Africa and also worldwide. 
In my opinion, policy makers and stakeholders from outside Africa overlook or miss understand the necessity for specific technology and innovation required to address the unique pressure faced by African farmers from pest pressure, agriculture yields, or food and security. So major policy approvals such as those resulting from the Europe farm to fork strategy inevitably generate uncertainty, especially in sector as complex as agri-food chain Understanding the exact requirements and associated cost takes time and put farmers and businesses at risk. Crop Life Africa Middle East has long been asking for additional investment and special emphasis on communicating in a timely manner. And the new requirements, as soon they are known, Africa farmers must be f benefit from adequate and realistic transition period if we are to adapt and maintain access to the Europe market. However, African farmers need to do more and we need to do it together. It's really now a time for all stakeholders involved in Africa agriculture to take our responsibility and make our voices heard, both at home and in Europe. If we do not do so now, then we will feel the impact in the next five years and have to live with the consequences for many years to come. And let me here be very clear. We are not talking about stopping the Europe Green Deal and Farm to Fork strategy. This train have left the station. We are talking about raising awareness for our specific needs and the huge potential in intended impact on African agriculture. That we, what we need really is uh, our extended implementation periods, exemption, exception, support for transitional per period and measures. This is where we need to focus our attention. And for that, we need to collaborate to together as an industry and as also value chain to engage our national government to ensure that our concerns have been heard. I know Alain, who we, you will be here uh, from later today, and we will discuss uh, this is in more detail. For the African continent to stand ready and to be heard, there is a key role for South Africa. You have key role to play as agriculture powerhouse and important global voice in your own right. And with the success story of GMO maize, my role also as in Crop Life Africa Middle East will be to support Crop Life South Africa to amplify its messages and voice and share this across the African region. One area also where South Africa can lead the way is in delivering research to help both South Africa and European policymakers to understand the potential impact of Europe policies on the South Africa agriculture sector. We urgently need to cooperate with our national researchers on data collection to quantify the impact of Europe policies on African productions, exports, and food sovereignty. This data will help us to engage in more convincing, convincing fact-based talks with Europe policymakers and hopefully help us secure the specific support and exemption that we need. Definitely, we need also to ensure that we have an African green transition that supports local and regional community as well as trade. Technology can help farmers across Africa deliver more with less and embedded sustainable business development. In turn, that can drive more intra-regional agriculture trade and decrease dependence on import while simultaneously reducing carbon emissions. Unfortunately, this opportunity will be missed if we do not raise our voices and influence the policies that will shape our, our future. If I can make one request for today's conference, if we are to make our voice heard in the Europe, then we need to strengthen our cooperation to amplify our voices. At Crop Life Africa Middle East, we stand ready to contribute time and resources to help make this happen. I would like to thank you for your attention and I look forward to hearing about the discussion you will have today. Thank you very much.